It's called A Letter to the Beats on the eve of my 71st birthday. I was just reaching three years old when the boat pulled into Washington the morning of the second inaugural of Harry Truman. These 68 years later, I see, oh, give them hell, Harry, as the origin of the atomic bomb, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. At nearly three years old, I had no understanding of any of these events. I was new to my family, their having adopted me the year before. Dad was driving a car in 1949 that I cannot remember. A 1948 something, I'm sure. Actually, it's, since I kind of remember, it's probably a Packard. <laughs> uh, the first car I remember was a brown 1950 Dodge he drove when we lived out by the lake. After that, he bought a car every even number year I was growing up. Most were Oldsmobiles, but one Buick. He worked for a living on the road and felt he needed a new car every other year. And so you sought kicks and freedom with a sense of restlessness on that January day, driving in the car you called the boat. Harry brought out the army for the celebrations. Maybe power and authority struck poorly. I did not read of weariness of war. The sense of the downtrodden, yes, but not the implement of the death of many of them. We left the big war to go to China and were heading for Korea, even though we did not know it then in January of 1949. It would be a year and a half later when we knew. Divide a country in half and expect there will not be a war. We still believe that 70 years later. Hmm. And speaking of weariness, there's a tendency to look at the age as it dawns as peaked in anxiety. We walked into the modernistic age in the anxiety of the First War, First World War, carrying the burden of economic depression for nearly 40 years. Six years later, we roared, thinking nothing mattered and we would never die. Mm. Then the crash, more depression, another war, and the bomb. The bomb. I remember the bomb. I crawled under my school desk by instruction of the teacher because of the bomb. A siren went off every Wednesday at noon because of the bomb. We were really anxious about the bomb when the Soviets had no way to deliver it. Imagine our lives if they had the way to deliver it to our shores. Happy birthday death might have been an actual reality rather than another modernistic outcry. Twenty years later, I found myself in the aftermath of another attempt at Eden. It might be Eden arises every so often, so it might then fall again. In this way, both Watts and Frost could be correct. Some beats helped, some sneered. The press beat us down in the same way as it did the beats. Three dot journalism came up with a slur this time, even though some gave it a softer touch to the word, to the great poet, Irwin. Should we have blessed the poor, the unfortunate, and the downtrodden? Saw them as seekers of the holy rather than be they? Well, we are who we are. Should we have gone on with life as it had been? Life has a way of changing things for survival's sake. To understand we will die one day requires we, re we value what we do today. Each act is its own beginning. Today we protest not a president who takes us to war against nation states, but one who takes us to war against human decency. There were no snows today in Virginia, but there remains the same challenge to take on. And so I write this letter on the eve of my 71st birthday with respect for what may have been the beginning 
with the beats. That generation following that would not accept definition from others took that lead and advanced it. They extend what is of value in their being to those who follow. This is as it has been and as it will be. Hmm. Thank you.